Peace, family. Assalamu alaikum. We back once again with another episode of the Tech Building Podcast. When the devil tries to keep you down, you show up with the strategy. Man, I pray everybody's doing well. Uh, it's Friday, July 16th. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I know I missed an episode. I know I missed um, a drop last week, but my schedule's kind of changed up a little bit. So I'm going to be, but then also too, I'm only really going to be, I'm only going to be doing one episode a week. I just feel like that's more conducive for my schedule and I'm able to make I'm able to make make the videos because I have some things I want to do with the podcast. So I want to just take my time with it and really only drop an episode a week. Um, so this episode will be wrapping up season one. Um, in season two, I have some guests I want to bring on. So um, yeah, just keep rocking out with your boy, you know what I'm saying? And um, keep supporting. I greatly appreciate all the support that I've gotten thus far. And so yeah, today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the need for discipline, but I, I, I have to. I have to. I have a little uh, pre-subject that I want to touch on. It's been a little minute, so I have. I have a lot of things that I want to talk about, but I'm not going to make it um, too crazy. But just one thing that I've been talking about recently, or thinking about recently, really ever since the um, the J Cole album review, the off-season review, and then also I was talking to my bro about. I was talking to my bro about um, top five lyricists of all time, and that's not that's obviously not taking in all the different categories of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like um, album sales, you know what I'm saying things of that nature. I guess you would say streams today, but really just about the hardcore nuts and bolts of lyricism. You dig what I'm saying? And when I say lyricism, the main thing that I'm talking about is bar for bar. You know what I'm saying? Like the complexity, wittiness, um, complexity, wittiness, is a there's a couple other things in that mix um, that I that I consider. Um, I think the, obviously the the presentation, you know what I'm saying how how the words or how the bars are said, um, and there's a couple other criterion that I use to determine like or what I look for when I think about lyricism or bar for bar ability. You dig what I'm saying, and so. I begin to think about it, and I'm like, I don't think J. Cole is lyrical. I think he's a great rapper. I think he's an outstanding rapper. I think that he makes great music. He puts together great albums. But when I think about lyricism, the first person I think about, and this is kind of how I determine my my top five lyricists of all time, I want it to be fair to all eras, and I wanted to, so because it's so difficult when you are thinking about something all time. So we think about greatest lyricism all time. So when you come to like the 90s, you got Nas, you got Big Pun, you got Big L, you know what I'm saying? You even got people who say like a Jay-Z. I think Jay-Z will go in that category. I mean, you got a lot. You got KRS-One, you got, you know what I'm saying, Gangsta, you got Guru. So it's like there's a lot of, if I didn't say Biggie, you know what I'm saying? Biggie's obviously in that mix. Hopefully I said Big Pun. But um, you have a lot of rappers in that mix so to me, I feel like I wanted to take the best, in my opinion, of that particular era. You dig what I'm saying? So my my top five, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, top five lyricists of all time was Rakim, Nas, I believe. I know I got Kendrick. Dang, I, I got to remember because I, I don't think I wrote it down. But I know I got... Rakim, Nas, Kendrick, I know I got that. I got Big L, and I'm missing one more. I can't remember who I had. I can't remember who I had in the fourth slot. But, yeah, those are, well, oh, yeah, yeah, no, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I got Eminem. All right, so in the order, I got, nah, this is not, because I think Eminem is the best technical rapper I've ever heard. But based going from era oldest to newest, Rakim, Nas, Eminem, Kendrick, Big L. You feel what I'm saying? So that that's my that's my top five lyricists of all time. So the, the conversation, like I said, sparked for me is J. Cole a lyricist. So I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna come back to that topic, you know what I'm saying? Create an episode off of that. So if anybody listens to that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Tech Building Pod, or you can follow me on YouTube at um Tech Building Network. And let me know what you think about that. So today we have the need 
for discipline. You feel what I'm saying? And the need for discipline is is man, it's such a really it's a it's a broad topic. There's a lot of detail and nuance to the need for discipline. Um, so as many people know or people that know me, I'm a, I'm a, a member of the Nation of Islam, a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And so I like to just share a clip from the minister and he's breaking down the need for discipline. to a lot so just wanted to kind of set the foundation for the dialogue uh, today with the need for discipline and I wanted to just highlight some of the things um, and base my how I feel about the need for discipline really off of what excuse me the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan stated and the the line that stuck out to me the most was when he said the uh, the need for discipline or discipline is conforming your life to a body of knowledge. You know what I mean? And so when I think about discipline in that context, for me, it kind of stands out as like we think about like martial arts. So when you have when you're in martial arts, there's always somebody who is the instructor or I went to um, La Cordon Blue Culinary School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And so the uh, the teacher is the head chef or whatever the chef instructor is in the kitchen and you are following his, I would say, example and his instruction. You dig what I'm saying? And by following that that person's instruction and their um, and their example, then you are able to gain one knowledge and then also to gain a skill set in that particular field or in this case, uh, discipline. You know what I mean? So, but and then before I go any further, I want to just go ahead and get a definition real quick. The word discipline means, according to Google, which I believe is, yeah, it says according to the Oxford languages, the practice of training to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. Two parts there. The second one reads, the second definition reads, a branch of knowledge, typically one studied in higher education, and that is in the form of a noun. Then in the, firm, uh, in the verb form of the word, discipline reads, train someone to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. Um, the synonyms for discipline are control, regulation, direction, order, authority, Rule, strictness, train, drill, teach, school, coach, educate, regiment, indoctrinate. So, with with these things kind of set in the set in the table, as I said in the beginning, the need for discipline for me really starts with this, and this comes from the restrictive law of Islam, given to us by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and. The first rule, according to what, according to the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the first rule of the universe, the first law of the universe is motion. 
then the second law of the universe is order. So I want to pause right there and kind of break that down because I don't want to lose the I'm not religious or I don't follow the Nation of Islam uh, folks. Everything that I've been taught in the Nation of Islam, I bring it down to my own reality. You dig what I'm saying? So when I hear a person say, because we're not, we're not the people that we just hear something and then we're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it, it's just the truth. I don't need to, anything to back it up or anything like that. I don't need no verification. No, sir, we don't operate like that. Um, when I hear the term, when I hear the, 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 the law or the statement of the first law of the universe is motion. Okay, let's, break, let's talk about that for a quick second. According to what I've studied, the in the beginning, there was nothing. The space was, quote unquote, empty. It were, there was the triple darkness, the emptiness of space. Okay, cool. So in this context, in this portion of the conversation, we could say, I believe it is fair to say that there was no motion. You dig what I'm saying? There was nothing moving because nothing existed. If there's nothing in existence, then it cannot move. And what I'm doing right now, I, I feel that it's, it's necessary to, to highlight what is actually occurring. I'm using words, and again, this is what, what, why, it's, why this podcast, why my brand is tech building, because this is what I feel like I'm doing. We're starting with nothing. We're starting with a topic, if you will. And then we're going to the definition that lays the base. So once we get, because again, we're taught in the, in the nation, is, uh, Islam is mathematics and mathematics is Islam. So if two plus two equals four, that's my control. That's my reference point because I know I live in a mathematic universe. Oxygen, the different atoms or the different elements, if you will, the different um, components that construct the universe are based on math. Oxygen is a formula. You dig what I'm saying? Water is a formula. You dig what I'm saying? So the universe is predicated on math. So whenever I'm going and I'm operating, I'm doing something, I'm starting with the simplest form of math that I can get to, that I can understand. So I know that two plus two equals four. One plus one equals two. So in the beginning, because there obviously had to be a beginning in order to get to um, to an ending or to get to a point. You can't have what we have today without having a beginning of something. So in the beginning, that's your one, there was nothing. Then after there was nothing, there was something. That's one plus one. There was nothing, then there was something. What does that equal? That equals there was some shape or form of movement. Because you can't have something, you can't have nothing, then have something and everything remain the same. That's mathematics. That's not um, dogmatic or that's not religious speak. That's just from my perspective, Brother Anthony's uh, layman perspective, because I don't have a PhD or, or a bachelor's, master's in any um, field of science or anything like that. I'm bringing it pure layman's terms. In the beginning, there was nothing. Now there's something. So now there is some kind of movement because something had to occur. So that vindicates in my reality the first law of the universe is motion. That that now gives that the green light. And, and I say my reality because I'm the one that is speaking, but I also say my reality because I want to just be as um, I guess the word is humble, but I say that because if somebody else, now if there's something else in what I just said that is flawed or misinterpreted or misunderstood, you know what I mean? Not looked with the correct, not looked underneath the correct, um, microscope, if you will, then I'm open to change. So this is so what I'm saying. I'm presenting my, I guess you would say so-called opinion. But I'm really looking at that as this is the basis of following the step-by-step -step process. I didn't create the number one. I didn't create the addition symbol or its meaning. 
and I didn't create the equal sign. The reason why I know one plus one equals two, not because of my opinion, but because of me following the rules of mathematics. You dig what I'm saying? So, although this is my opinion, this is my, I don't want to say my opinion, this is my perspective, I look at it as something firm or solid because I'm only following the rules of what I've been presented that I know. And we are getting up like math, in its simplest form, one plus one equals two. If there is something else in between that equation that I don't know, we can talk about it and then my perspective will change. You dig what I'm saying? So we have no motion, then we have motion. You feel what I'm saying? So now we're on to the second law. The second law is the second law of the universe, as we're talking about the most honorable life, Muhammad, is order. And it goes a little bit further and says, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't have the book right in front of me, but everything in the, in the universe moves in, a, in an order. And as soon as you go outside of that order, you begin the cessation of the life of whatever that item may be. We're also taught by the most honorable life, Muhammad, that the human brain is made designed to think rightly when you begin to think unrighteously when you begin to think unrighteously you begin to go against the very design of your own mind as the minister puts it it's like planing a piece of wood against the green you destroy the beauty of it so when i hear the second law of the universe is order Again, I have to put it in my own reality. When I'm working in a restaurant, when I'm working on the line and I get an order, let's just say, you know what I'm saying, for a burger or a salad, whatnot, I begin to move. I put the burger on the grill. I put the salt and pepper. You feel what I'm saying? I get my, my, my uh, rest of my accoutrements ready, bun, whatever sauces, whatever vegetation is going on the burger, get that ready, get that set up. And then when the burger is cooked, you know what I mean? I put cheese or whatever else I got to put on it. Then I begin to assemble it. So I'm beginning to move and I'm moving in an ordered fashion because I have a desired outcome. I want to make this burger. I want to make it to the right temperature and I want to get it to the customer in a proper time frame. I'm not educated um, highly in the, any field of science. But I also understand that with in the um, dealing with the atom, from what I understand about um, the the periodic table of elements, once you change a single proton from an element, it changes. The protons are hard and fast. Once you change the proton, you change the element. So order is the foundation of existence. Everything that we do, how we breathe, how we walk, how our brains operate, you know what I mean? How the earth revolves, you know what I mean? Everything that we that we experience in our reality is ordered. Like I said, oxygen is a is a formula. Water is a formula, H2O. One hydrogen molecule two oxygen molecules. Those things, if, I hope I said that correct. <laughs> that's, what I was that's what I just paused real quick. But those things are in a particular order in order for us to get certain kinds of things. You feel what I'm saying? Like I said, like water. You have to put these two things together in order to get the liquid that we have water. And I'm just taking my time and really being meticulous about it because when we're talking about for me really when i'm talking about anything i want to try to be as right and exact as i possibly can be because we in our generation in our time we are, we're creating our own rules and standards you feel what i'm saying we are the ones we're saying okay we don't believe in in traditional religion we don't believe in um as I've heard, man-made constructs, you know what I'm saying, social constructs and whatnot, these kind of terminologies, we don't we don't rock with them as a as a as a generation, as a culture. 
So we are responsible now to establish, to reestablish our own principles, standards, methods, culture, and so on and so forth. So I feel like I want to be as right and exact as I possibly can because we're setting we're setting the table. We're setting a standard. If I'm making a creme brulee, you have to get your custard right. Sugar balance has to be appropriate. You dig what I'm saying? When you're ba when you're baking the item, it has to be appropriate. You dig what I'm saying? When you're baking an item, it has to be you want to put it in the water bath to maintain the proper moisture. You know what I'm saying? You want to put it at the proper temperature um, because you know what I mean. You want it to cook in the in the in accordance with the proper amount of time based on the science. So everything that we're that we're doing, everything that is in motion, has an order. So now what I've just what I've just done in my reality, I've walked off the street, I've walked into the mosque, and I've been given this green book called the Restrictive Law of Islam. I'm like, I'm out. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in this. I don't, who says that this is true? I'm not taking it and I'm putting it in my own reality. And I'm sitting back, I'm like, okay, wow, that, 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 that makes sense. For me, that says, okay, let me, let me find out a little bit more. If you're the kind of person or if you're a person that, you know I'm saying, that you're educating me and you're telling me some good truths, let me find out a little bit more. Let me listen to a little bit more what you're saying. Now you're building up that kind of like that cachet a little bit. So I just wanted to take my time and, and articulate that for the people, you know what I mean, that, I, that are listening, inshallah, that are not religious or they're not, they're not, they don't believe in conventional religion or they don't, they don't think along the lines of, you know what I mean, um, dogmatic dialogue. I just want to break things down to where. I'm, I'm just really here about, again, tech building. I'm here to get the science and the mathematics. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm dialoguing for. So everything that I'm bringing, yes, it's coming from my mind. It's coming from the teachers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad as given to us by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But, these th but it's steeped in science and mathematics. Okay? So... Now we have that, we have that established of the first law of motion and the first law or the second law of order. So that right there to me kind of is the blanket, if you will, or the like dragnet is coming to my mind or the umbrella of why we need discipline. If a person asks me in a, like in a question for, okay, brother Anthony, why do, why do we need discipline? I would say because that is the foundation of all existence. So what do I look like living in a universe of order and I want to live my life in disorder? You feel what I'm saying? To me, that doesn't make sense. So moving on now. When I, when I hear statements like uh, YOLO, you know what I mean? And the inference, the inference from that is you only live once. I'm So I'm going to do what I want. I want to enjoy what I want to do in my, my own lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to be able to come back and live another time. So let me go and live it up. Or I hear people say, you do you and I'm going to do me. You feel what I'm saying? These kind of statements to me are along the lines of disorder. And I, I want to I I clarify this just one more time. I'm saying to me as a technicality, these sayings are along the lines of disorder Based on the uh, the result, based on the decisions, based on the result, two plus two equaling four is not my perspective. It's just a fact. So when you say, you do you and I'm going to do me, you're, there, is a, there is a lack of regard for order. You may be in order or you may not. It's up to your discretion. So there are going to be times where, yeah, like, it's going to be like where, where both things can be true. That's not my opinion. That that's the reality of what that is. 
what I see, and I'm, I'm a brother, so I really I'm mainly speaking on the, from the perspective of uh, brothers. And I'm gonna be as um, I'm gonna be as candid or as transparent as I can be. We have a disregard for discipline, and I would say we're at the point where I believe. Where we are soft. Now I don't mean soft like you're scared to fight. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna defend your family. You feel what I'm saying? I don't want people to get offended, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? What you mean by soft? Oh no, you so okay, no sir. We we're good on that. What I mean soft is soft mentally, but we don't know how to deal with and handle the vicissitudes of life, the difficulties of life. Okay, Tom, what do you mean? I feel that we are too, we are hypersensitive. Where you have to talk, even amongst your friends, you have to talk like politically. When you make a statement where it could be potentially offensive to somebody, you have to say, okay, I'm going to say it like this. Um... I say like this, light. Let me say like light skinned brothers. Light skinned brothers, um, they they tend not to to be violent. Let's just say that. But then you got to follow that up and say, oh, not to say that all, not to say that all light skinned brothers are not violent, or not to say that all dark skinned brothers are not violent, or are or are violent. But I'm just making a statement. You have to you have to make sure that you're touching all the groups. Black women have an attitude. Oh, not to say that not to say that Puerto Rican women don't have an attitude or Asian women don't have attitudes. Not to say that all black women don't have attitudes. You know what I mean? You have to talk in this kind of broad kind of like political way. Because we don't want to offend. We don't want to make somebody feel bad. And I say like I know I, I understand being a podcaster or doing anything in the public. You, you have to speak that way because you don't know who could be listening. And somebody who doesn't know you, you know what I mean, will look at you and say, okay, well, yeah, that was offensive. I didn't know that you didn't mean to not offend me. I don't, I don't know you like that. You feel what I'm saying? But when you're, when you're amongst people that know you and we still have to talk like that, I'm like, man, that's, that's weird. It's just, it makes me uncomfortable because it's just like, yo, we're just so... We're so ready to be offended. You feel what I'm saying? Also, the way I would say soft is just... I mean, yo, I, I grew up watching a lot of Dragon Ball. You know what I'm saying? I don't really consider myself an anime watcher because I've really only watched Dragon Ball. I've watched some Fist of the North Star. I've watched some Naruto. You dig what I'm saying? Um, I've watched, I probably watched, the most other anime that I've probably watched was One Piece. Um, I tried My Hero Academia, didn't really like that. I thought, I honestly thought it was whack. Um, I, so, but I really only watched Dragon Ball, you know what I mean? And it's like, When you, when you know, like, in Dragon Ball, like, how Vegeta and Goku, how they are, I mean, really, Piccolo, everybody. Yo, you going out on your, you want to go out on your sword. Or you want to, you want to stand up, you want to rise up. It's not about, you know what I'm saying, cowering. Or it's not about, you know what I mean, not wanting to step up to the plate. A lot of the times, these guys are fighting people that are not on their level. Or, they, I'm saying, they're not on the, their opponent's level. They're fighting somebody that's way stronger than them. They don't really have no business fighting them. But when you have to step up to the plate and 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 you know what I'm saying, put your life on the line, you got to do that. Like when Chow Tzu jumped on Nappa's back, you feel what I'm saying? And he was and he uh, self destructed to try to kill Nappa, or try to stop Nappa, and Gohan wanted to look away because he was like, yo, he knew what Chow Tzu was getting ready to do, and it was going to be sad. But Piccolo was like, nah, man, you got to watch that. You got to honor his bravery. Yo, that's that's the type of stuff that gets me hyped up. Because it's like, yo, that's 
That's real. In in my competitive life, you know what I'm saying, playing football and wrestling. I played a lot more football than I did wrestling. But excuse me. You want to just be, I'm, I'm trying to find a, a good way to articulate it because it's really more of a feeling than it is a, than it's like, than it's like a word. But it's like I said before, I grew up in the, in the Michael Irvin, Jerry Rice, you know what I'm saying? Kobe, um, Barry Sanders, you know what I mean? I grew up in that era of sports. So... I'm, I'm, if I'm a cornerback like Dion, and I know I'm going to get like I like Jerry Rice said, as in, as the wide receiver on my team, when we have practice, I want I want to bust you behind. I want to make sure when you walk off the field after, after practice, you're like, damn, like okay, Dion, 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 bust me up today. You feel what I'm saying? I want to, yo, I got to be transparent. Like I want to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Not in a literal way, but it's like that's my mentality. I want to completely destroy you. Even at practice. So let alone in the game. So that's why I kind of don't like the, not kind of, I don't like the LeBron era of sports because everybody just too friendly. Yeah, bro, we could be, me and LeBron could be best friends after the game or after the series. But during the game, during the series, I hate, I don't, I don't like you. I hate you. You suck. I want to get you out of here, period. And today we call that type of mentality, we call it toxic. <laughs> I've had my, I have my bro say, yeah, you like toxicity. I'm like, okay, if that's, if that's the tone we want to put on it today, okay, no problem. I'll, I'll rock out with it. To me, that's not toxic. That means just like, yo, bro, I, I want to get you. That's a part of my testosterone, my serotonin mix. I have a desire for power as male. It's a part of my biochemistry. I don't want to shake everybody's hand. I don't want everybody to think, okay, yeah, now nah, yeah, I, I, want, I want to play with Tony because, yeah, he, he's, he's friendly. No. LeBron got four rings or three rings, however many he got. I believe it's four. Jordan, who people say nobody want to play with him or he was an a-hole, got six. People definitely said this about Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Nobody want to play with Kobe because he's, just, he's like a mean guy. You know what I'm saying? He'll uh, ridicule you and all that. May Allah be pleased with our brother. He got five. I don't want to be, yo, that's just not my, this is what I'm saying. Like, this is why I think of it as, as like soft. Also, like in basketball, it's like era of like flopping. Where like flopping is like cool. Best players in the world, they out here, they, they, they flop. It's like, okay, yeah, it's part of the game. No, man. That's whack. That's 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 tender. I got I got I got uh, multiple nephews, you know what I'm saying? When they come around me, may fall down or whatever. It's like, bro, suck it up. Hold it down. Now, obviously you get you bust your head or you bust your lip or you bleeding and all that, your arm broken all that. Of course, yeah, we're going to get you your, your proper medical attention. But we have now, it's now in our era where we are, where it's like, yo, we just too soft. We too tender. We can't, we can't take nothing on the chin. Can't take a punch. Can't take, you know what I'm saying? Ridicule, any type of adversity. You dig what I'm saying? We, we run in, we run into get emotional relief, whether that be, you know what I'm saying? bottle or weed or pills or you know what I'm saying whatever whatever you use to get that we don't have the fortitude and again I'm mostly speaking about brothers that's that's our culture and I think a large part of it is because due to the lack of discipline that we have in our lives you know what I mean the wonderful thing about the nation of Islam it's a military it's an it's an ordered lifestyle. You come in the nation, you get your ex, you get the restrict the, the restrictive law of Islam. Now a person be like, man, but I, I don't want to be restricted. Okay. Gravity is a restriction. To me, in my reality, once you have the 
I guess the parallel or the, I guess you could say the analogy of a universal level of understanding, which is mathematics, to now it's in my reality. I feel like I'm obligated to follow that. Because I come out of the universe, as I said earlier, if it was no universe, there would be no me. It would be no us. You feel me? So, if I'm not following what the foundation of my own existence is, again, going back to the restrictive law, now I'm going out of order. Now I'm on the path of the, of the cessation of my life. So we're running away from restriction, brothers. We're running away from living an ordered life. Now, again, everybody don't got to be in the nation of Islam. I know everybody's not going to be. But if we don't have a level of discipline in our life, if we're not living a disciplined life, some people don't know how to be disciplined. Some of our, some of our brothers and sisters grew up with in single, family, uh, single parent homes. You know what I mean? Growing up with parents that didn't really care what they did. You don't grow up with discipline. You feel what I'm saying? So you don't know what that, how that is, what that lifestyle is. Then you get to be 18, 19, 20, you know what I'm saying, 25 years old. Now you're like, oh, I'm a grown man. I live how I want to live. That's a problem. I want to say it like this. The muscles in our body, they pull our bones to give our body movement. You dig what I'm saying? There are these little, like it's, you got to see like the image of it. But it's, there's, there's like a system on a cellular level and it's kind of like an interlocking system where these things come together and they pull our, our muscles, our, our bones into motion. That's how kind of how in a very broad very not well explained layman way of explaining it. That's how our bodies move. Once we receive the signal from the brain. <laughs> but in order for these muscles to grow, you, when you lift weights or when you exercise, you're tearing the muscle. Literally. I've read online it's like called micro tears. There might be a more technical term than that. But you're literally tearing the muscle down. And once the muscle heals, it gets a little stronger. So the term no pain, no gain is literal. You got to experience pain to have some type of gain. And as the minister teaches us, God has ordained pain for us. And one of the things I want to do is I want to beat down the wall between religion and science. I want to, I want to do my best to remove that. Because it's, a, it's an unnecessary obstruction that is a part of why we are still in the condition that we're in as people, specifically black people. The disconnection between religion and science is, I'm going to just say it like this in a plain way. It's just, it's just an, an issue in our, in our culture, in our society. It's a part of our disorder. So, the minister teaches us, God has ordained pain for, for, uh, for us. And he says, like, yeah, some of, a lot of us run from pain. We don't want to be in pain. We don't want to. We don't want to do anything that might cause us pain. You dig what I'm saying? But pain is how we grow. And again, that universal example is in our own human bodies. In order for our muscles to grow, they have to be torn on a very, very small, very, very, very small scale. Then when they heal up, you get stronger. You get they get bigger. So if you don't want to experience any pain, uh, the minister teach us that Moses, Musa, who had who ended up teaching the Caucasians uh, civilization, how to cook their food and whatnot, they were walking around in their all fours. He had to put a board in their back to get them to stand up. You dig what I'm saying? 
So if you don't want that spiritual board in your back to get you to live upright, because right now we live on the on the level of the beast as we're taught. Living on the level of the beast mean, like my, my parents got a dog named uh, Teddy. I call him Tettles. When Tettles see a piece of food on the ground, uh, like somebody drop a piece of hamburger on the ground, he gonna go get it. You know what I mean? Now he might now if, if it's right by me, he might look at me real quick, but he gonna take a couple steps forward. But if ain't nobody there and it's on the ground, he gonna go get that. Uh, my sister had another dog named Bentley. You just take Bentley outside. He see a squirrel. He gonna take off running for that squirrel. Because that's just that he can't control his impulses. You feel what I'm saying? When a, when a, when a, an animal sees some food, they go for it. When an animal sees some sex, they go for it. When animal want to go to sleep, they do that. No control over the, what from what I understand, the reptilian mind, the animalistic mind. This is tied to, in my, from my perspective, YOLO. I'm going to do what I want. You do you and I'm going to do me. We're living on the plane of the animals, living on, living in the same with the same mindset of the animals, the beasts of the field. We're taught in Nation of Islam that God is man and man is God. God is a fully evolved man, fully developed man and woman. Woman is God as well. It's stages. So the first stage, I guess you would say, I don't want to say first. But you're on a, on a dead level. You're on a zero on a, on, on a zero degree um, incline, straight line. Then you come up. You're on an animal level. Like I said, you see something, you do it. No impulse control. Then you come up to the level of man. You dig what I'm saying? Then after that, you go up to then the, the man in his fully developed form is God, a being, a power, and force. So, when we're living on the level of the animal, living on the plane, or living on the level of the beast of the field, we're not living to our full potential, even though, you know what I'm saying, it might feel good. Like I told a brother the other day, I said, you could use an iPhone for a doorstop. It might be great. You could use an iPhone for a coaster. I'm saying you get a brand new iPhone 12 Pro, whatever they call it today. You can use it for a coaster. And it'll probably work fantastic. But somebody that has enough, that has the, the knowledge of what that device is, you would they'll be like, bro, you're not using that device nearly to its capability. First off, you're not even using it right for, in its first function. Let alone using it to its proper ability. You feel what I'm saying? So when looking at the potentiality or the purpose and the design, I think that's a really a, a, a big point of the the iPhone analogy. If you're not looking at something or if you're not using something, even really, like I said, in its first function, but you're then you're really using it like well below its uh, level of functionality. That has a big, I think it's it's just that item is not serving its purpose. You dig what I'm saying? And the minister teaches a lot about finding your purpose and working your purpose. You know what I mean? But also with purpose comes design. Everything in creation, everything in nature has a design and a purpose. So if you don't understand your purpose, you have a disconnection with your design. And I kind of feel like they go uh, hand in hand. You could say vice versa. If you don't understand your design, it'd be hard for you to um, establish and understand your purpose. So as I said in the beginning, the human mind from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, he teaches us that the human mind is designed to think rightly. So if we're living a lifestyle that is unrighteous and people say, I'm not gonna go too long on this, but some people say, um things like you know what I'm saying I'm not here for a good I'm not here for a long time I'm here for a good time you know what I mean to say these kind of things where it's like it's about indulging in what makes you uh necessarily feel good but a person could also say well what really is righteousness you know what I mean 
And so for the non-religious uh, my uh, listeners out there, I, I say an example that I use or kind of an analogy tool that I use is take out the word God and put life and then take out the word devil or Satan and put death. Anything that stops the propagation of life, like being broke, you know what I'm saying, or uh, like a miscarriage or, you know what I'm saying, overdosing on drugs, you know what I'm saying, uh, murders, anything, any kind of thing like that, we kind of feel like that's bad energy, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not that's not good vibes. And it's like, that's the cessation of life. That's not building towards the progression or propagation of life. So that is synonymous with the devil. The devil has been, the devil is, his nature is diametrically opposed to the nature of God. And so for this, with, with this tool, God is in, re, in the relation to the progression of life, uh, a childbirth, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, a promotion at a job or getting a new job, you know what I mean? Um, any type of financial growth, any type of um, uh, familial growth, you know what I mean? These kind of things, eating healthy, you know what I'm saying? These kind of things promote life or like I said, using this tool, that's God, you feel what I'm saying? So when we're talking about the God designed the human brain to think rightly. And when you begin to think and do other than righteousness, and like I said, so now righteousness equals doing things that propagate life, that further and progress life, like eating healthy, you know what I'm saying? Um, practicing safe sexual um, interactions, you know what I mean? Living a, a mentally healthy lifestyle, not doing things that mentally bring you down. You dig what I'm saying? All these kind of different things are righteousness. You dig what I'm saying? Like these kind of things, living a disciplined, ordered lifestyle is synonymous from my perspective with righteousness. You dig what I'm saying? So if you're living a, a, a disordered life or a non-regimented or disciplined style of life, that could be looked at in the opposite destination of righteousness. And I say destination because we're taught in a nation that our righteousness will sustain us. So as the world is getting crazy, you know what I'm saying? The fall of America is happening. We got the whole, the COVID-19 pandemic still going around. It's been over a year. You know what I mean? Because our righteousness, our discipline, you know what I mean? Us being a disciple of a body of knowledge is going to sustain us during the turbulence of this world. You dig what I'm saying? So again, it's really not about the dogmatic speak or the mis, the misconstrued connotation or interpretation that we have of the word religion or the concept of religion, being disciplined is following a proper, as the minister said, you're, you're, you're disciplining yourself underneath a body of knowledge. You dig what I'm saying? And knowledge is based on mathematics and science is based on reality. We don't live in a spook world. We don't live in an imaginary world. We live in a material world. And so when we talk about body of knowledge, that's not something that we can't prove in no limit of time. You dig what I'm saying? So really, and again, like a lot of my, my talk is really towards the brothers because one, because I'm a brother, you know what I mean? I don't think it's necessarily my place to um, try to uh, build sisters up or the, you know what I'm saying? Like I'll put a sister onto some information from the nation, but it's like, I don't know if it's, it's not, it's not, I know it's not my place to correct sister's behavior. You dig what I'm saying? That's, as we say, that's above my pay grade. You dig what I'm saying? So brothers, the need for discipline is imperative because us being the leaders of homes, communities, you know what I'm saying? Civilization and nations, we have to be ordered. We have to be regimented. We have to be disciplined. You dig what I'm saying? So the need for discipline, I just believe, like I said before, is just imperative to our success. So um, I just want to thank any, everybody that, you know what I'm saying, anybody that stuck around me this long. I always greatly appreciate um, the support. I know, like I said, I missed um, some episode. I missed a little bit of time, but I'm, I'm working with some things. Um, I'm working on some things beyond not beyond the podcast the word is actually escaping me but yeah behind the scenes i'm working on some things behind the scenes you know what i'm saying trying to develop my youtube trying to just uh make my podcast a little bit better you know what i'm saying get my audio and things like that corrected but god willing you know what i'm saying i'm gonna be back with season two 
with some guests, some more interactive things with the podcast, everything with Tech Building Network. So follow me on, on Twitter at Tech Building Pod, or you can find me on YouTube, Tech Building Network. Go ahead and drop me a subscribe if you don't mind. So family, thank you once again. I pray everybody continues to have a blessed day. And I thank you for rocking with Tech Building Podcast. When the devil tries to keep you down, you always show up with the strategy. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.